Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode here in my channel. My name is Erica. I am an expat here in Maldives for quite a number of years now. And um, in this video, I am going to share with you some of the common like some answers to the common questions that I get especially when it comes to housing so today we are going to talk about living arrangements for expats who are coming here in Maldives to work but before I start I would like to ask you to please subscribe and like this video and all of my other videos please watch them if you like if you want to know more about being an expat here in Maldives um, I try to like you know upload videos that are very informative and could really really help a lot of fellow expats and OFW wannabes who want to come here to Maldives so let's get started for today's topic yeah we are going to talk about arrangements so we will be I will be guiding you on what are the possible living arrangements for you or what are they going to be like based on like what your employer is going to offer you and what will it mean or how much will um the, the living i mean the apartments and houses how much will they cost here in male if you're based in male or hulu male what was that first and foremost do employers give accommodation to expats or you know migrant workers here in Maldives yes they normally do they like most of them give I think everyone that I know of like they give either like either they give it by cash or they give an actual accommodation or an actual house to their expat workers so yeah it is provided it should be in the contract um, apart from your salary you should always ask about your living arrangements so if it's not there, you better better ask your employer. So what are the different types of living arrangements? One, as I said earlier, um, they might give you cash. So it's up to you where are you going to find a house or an, a room or an apartment or what whatever kind of um, like living arrangement would you like for yourself, depending on the budget that you have. So normally, um, the range of that budget is from 5,000 rufiyah or higher because that's actually the price for a one-bedroom apartment here in Male. But 5,000, you get it's very difficult right now to find a one-bedroom apartment that is worth 5,000 rufiyah. So usually you would have to take from your salary. So if you're open to like live with other people, you know, like you can rent a room and then like share it with someone else then you can have the price and then your budget will be enough um, so yeah you have to check because some employers they give less than that which means you will have to like shoulder more of your housing expenses from your own pocket I'm going to share with you an experience that I had uh, before my employer was like giving us before they gave us like our staff apartment they gave us um, accommodation allowance so for that accommodation allowance I was able to fit it according to my budget so I was able to find a like a bed space basically there were six of us in one room sharing one toilet from it's a it's a two-bedroom apartment so the land landlady and the landlord were living in the other room and the six of us were living in the other room so uh, I stayed there for quite a few months before we were finally given our staff accommodation. So it was quite a, a few months of you know sacrificing, and it it's also in a good like it's a good rate. So might as well just you know anyway. I'm going to stay there in a month for like a few hours, like during the night only, and most of the time I like I go out, I go to cafe. So it's it's okay long it's okay long for me but if that's not for you then yeah you better find a place that you're more comfortable with but if you are open in bed spacing um you make sure that you have your own closet that you can lock and your you know your things your valuables are no kept safe because since you're sharing the room with other people with a lot of other people then that could be a risk also 
but in that place that I've lived before, it was pretty safe naman. And then we were able to cook also, like the kitchen can be used by the tenants. And there's also a sala where we can watch like TV. So it was okay. It's just like basically in a house with my roommates, you know, like I just treat them like my sister. So no problem at all. So if your employer is not giving you an accommodation allowance, it basically means they will give you a staff accommodation or a staff apartment. So in a staff apartment, it's usually, I mean, it's, yeah, <laughs> since it's staff apartment, every, like, all the workers, all the migrant workers will be in that same place, in the same building. So depending on the superiority, of course, um, will be the... The arrangement of the rooms for example if you're a manager then you get like maybe a, a room for your own only and if you like you're an executive or an associate then you share it with other associates so that's the that's the common you know, arrangement here so you just better ask your employer about it and then for the utilities it's usually shared between employer and employee. So, for example, if an employer has, you know, like a cap, for example, uh, we will pay for your electricity like 1,000 rufia every month. And if it goes more than that, then you will just have the, the you know, exceed the excess, the exceeding amount. So, yeah, that's the usual uh, no, setup. But in my case right now, um, we are paying for the utilities. We are paying for electricity, water, internet, and repairs, everything. So the, our, our, <laughs> our company is just giving us the house that we are living in. But apart from that, it, it's hands off now. They're hands off now. So it's all us now, which is quite mahal. And here in Maldives, um, water is more expensive than electricity. So is long because at least it's more comfortable you know than renting like than my experience before of sharing it with six other people so here in Mali the cost for an apartment varies so for example if you want a one bedroom apartment it's usually seven thousand to nine thousand uh, rufia if you want a two bedroom apartment because like you want to share it with like a friend um, that will be around 12,000 to 15,000 and if it's a three bedroom apartment it's more expensive you will, yeah it's parang 20 to 25 so it really depends um, usually um, what people do is that they rent a room from an apartment for example for, ex for example for example there's a three bedroom apartment and then the landlord um, rents out one room for an expat so like that for that one room it depends like some like charge six thousand seven thousand rufia others charge higher it depends on the location also and normally it already includes the bills which is good but yeah which is good um, so you will just have to arrange it with the landlord or the landlady. Basta, you have to ask for this kind of budget, this type of budget for your accommodation. Because if like there are employers who give like less than that, like 2,000, 1,000 rufia for accommodation, then like you can't find a place to stay in that range, in that budget range. So don't get shocked when you get here in Male and see all these buildings and all these apartments and you know there's no house here like what we usually see in the Philippines, a standalone house. It's very rare to see it. Maybe I saw some here in Male but that's like the president's house or like somebody like very very rich guy's house. But like it's mostly apartments and um, for the new apartments means that it's very it's very difficult to find an apartment that lets a new one and already has a lift. So if your room is like very up there, then you would have to suffer pa because you, there's no lift. So that's one of those considerations you have to make. Plus the proximity pa to your workplace and those things. Typically, Male is just walkable. Every like everywhere you go, you can just walk. But it also depends on your stamina, like how far are you willing to walk, and you know, like of course it saves time if you live closer to like your workplace. 
I hope I was able to cover everything, um, all your questions about like living arrangements here in Maldives. And if I missed anything, I guess I missed something. I, you can just comment it or like you know ask me right away um, for like any questions that you have about living here in Maldives and I'll be very very happy to answer them so don't forget to like and subscribe and you know like click the the bell <laughs> so that you will be notified on my next videos and I will see you again next week thank you and bye